Okay. I've been getting emails and I've been getting phone calls about the blood red moons. And so I figured I better make a quick video about this so as to have a link to send people so that I don't have to keep answering the emails. Uh, but I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong in regards to asking me the questions because, hey, you never know unless you ask, right? But the thing here is it's all a bunch of falderol. These blood red moons, yeah, they may show up on certain dates and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, if you um, Google it, you're going to find 104 million websites talking about this. There's this one guy, as a matter of fact, that does a pretty good job of researching it out and showing how, you know, the, the blood red moons showed up on certain dates and certain feast days and stuff like that. That's all well and good. Okay. But why now? Why is John Hagee pushing this? who we know for a fact is a false prophet. He even has gone so far as to declare that Jesus Christ did not come as the Messiah for the Jews. All right, he even wrote a book about it. And I, I'd never forget a few months ago when I was, you know, when you do your regular research online, every now and then these commercials pop up. And, well, they always pop up, as a matter of fact, on most news uh, articles. And so, and, and I was seeing literally hundreds of times John Hagee declaring, you know, Jesus isn't the Messiah for the Jew. And he kept, coming up with these uh, offers to buy his book. And so the guy is a false prophet. And, and then, But I have no doubt in my mind they're going to take advantage of these four moons. Uh, Rome's going to do something with it. Uh, it's just like what they're doing with Israel. They got everybody looking at Israel, uh, making them think that they're the chosen people, when in fact they deny Jesus Christ as Messiah, so they can't possibly be the chosen people. And uh, I even go into detail about that in the Bible Truth section. Go to the Media Truth and go down to Who is Israel? I even have a video about it. I mean, the Bible's pretty plain about this stuff, but there's certain Bible verses and certain historic statements or events that these false preachers will not share. Like, for example, the secret rapture. Uh, if you go to the false prophecies, go to my secret rapture page. Um, you'll see there's an awful lot of Bible verses that prove these guys are lying, but these Bible verses are never mentioned on their pulpits. You wouldn't believe how much evidence there is to prove these guys are lying. And even in, in, go to the same area, prophecy section, go to the seven-year trip section. I go into pretty good detail here to let people know there is no seven-year trip. There's not even seven nanoseconds to get ready. When Jesus splits that eastern sky, if you're not ready, you're not going to have seven years to repent at all. That's it. Uh, but there's a reason they're doing this. It has to do with the prophecies that I outline here. But I go into a little bit more detail with these prophecies. If you go to the prophecy section and go to the prophecy of today, go to People Get Ready which is uh, a book I wrote 10 years ago, I think, maybe, quite a few years ago. It's also been updated here with a sermon series that I did. It's both uh, audio as well as transcripted. Uh, but you might want to start here uh, where it says, The sun will be turned to darkness. Jesus makes a statement in Matthew 24, 29, where he says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. You might want to take a look at these well-documented quotes, one from a Yale president, one from a professor of Harvard, and one from a, an author who was published in the collection of the Massachusetts Historical Society in regards to how at noon day, in the middle of the day, a sheet of white paper held within a few inches of the eyes was equally invisible with the blackest velvet. They got so scared. They had no idea what was going on because the sun just turned off. They have no idea what was going on. And they actually, it says here in this one that Yale, that Yale president said, that uh, some of the members of Congress preferred to light candles because they thought the end of the world was coming. They literally thought it was the end of the world. Okay, scroll to the next statement that Jesus makes. In the very same prophetic verse, he says the moon should not give her light. Well, if you go in the Bible and you go, there's, there's only three areas in Scripture that talks about the moon turning into blood or looking like blood. Starts off with Joel chapter 2, verse 31, where he says the sun shall be darkened. Well, we just found that happened. The moon will turn to blood afterwards, right? And then it says this happens before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And that, of course, is the end of life on this planet. The great and terrible day, or the great and dreadful day. And it's great for us Christians, but it's dreadful for them that are left behind, right? The next verse is just an echo of Joel. It's uh, Acts 2.20, and it says the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon into blood before the great, the great and terrible or notable day of the Lord. But check out Revelation 6, verse 12. It goes into a little bit more detail here. It says... And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And then it says the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So now there's a big old earthquake that happens, right? Well, did that happen? Because we already know that the sun stopped shining. We already know that the moon looked like blood. 
And this all happens in 1780, okay? Was there a global earthquake? Well, of course, Jesus also said the stars will fall from heaven. So look what, look at all these documented statements about, they actually thought the sky was falling. I, I don't know if this is where that chicken little thing came, where that little guy was running around saying the sky is falling, the sky is falling. I don't know, but uh, who knows, who cares? But the frequency of the meteors was estimated to be about as half that of the flakes of snow in an average snowstorm. So this was something to see. And look at this one here. This is from Frederick Douglass. It says, in reminiscing about his early days of slavery was, he says, I witnessed this gorgeous spectacle and was awestruck. The air seemed filled with bright messengers from the sky. I was not without the suggestion at the moment that it might be the harbinger of the, of the coming of the Son of Man. And in my then state of mind, I was prepared to hail him as my friend and deliverer. I had read that the stars shall fall from heaven, and they were now falling. And so I have no doubt in my mind that the Lord allowed him to make that utterance because it was prophetically perfect at that time. Why? Well, check this out. We already know about Revelation 6, verse 12. The quake comes before all this. Well, November 1st, 1755, which is definitely before the dark day of May 19th, 1780, that there was a global earthquake. And that's what our scientists today call it, a global quake, because look at some of the statements that are made here. Four, th four million square miles is how much this thing shook. It even has a list of the nations that were involved in this. And in uh, six minutes, 60,000 people died. And there were no high rises back then. So again, why are they pushing this blood red moon now? Well, the latter rain's falling. People like myself that preach prophecy are out there letting the people know that these events happened. There is no seven year trib. And that great tribulation that Jesus speaks of in Matthew 24, 29, where he says that all these things are going to happen after that great tribulation, lets the cat out of the bag. It makes Rome angry. Why? Because what Jesus is talking about in context here is when the Catholic Church is done killing the Christians, these events are going to happen in prophecy, and they all happen exactly as he said. But if they can push these four blood red moons out there now, it's going to confuse the masses, and they're not going to be ready for it. The fact of the matter is, Jesus is exposing the fact that after the Catholic Church does this, it's going to happen. If you go to uh, remedygod.org, go to the RCC Exposed section, go to Horrific, and go to Fox's Book of Martyrs, please understand, Jesus said this was going to be a great tribulation. This man, John Fox, outlines the tortures and the deaths of over 500 million people by the Roman Catholic Church. This is a huge book, by the way, so if you got time, you might want to read it, but... It's, and it's not easy to read. You will start to weep. I guarantee it. If you're a Christian, you're not going to have an easy time of reading this book because of what the Catholic Church did to these people. They, can't, they have to keep this hidden to the best of their ability. But Jesus said when they're finally taken out, and what happened? Well, Napoleon was sent in, and the Pope literally dies in exile, and the Catholic Church was done killing the Christians en masse. I mean, they never stopped killing them. I mean, they're doing it today using Islam to do it now, yeah. But in mass, the way they were doing it back then, which is kind of the way they're doing it now because there's a Christian dying now every two minutes. And so don't let them confuse you. Stick with the Bible. The Bible states plainly in three areas in the scripture about these blood red moons. And it has to be, it's only used one time to, de to define a specific time in history. Now we know what it is. It's after the Catholic Church is done killing the Christians the first time. That's in the past. Their public relations ploy worked well. For literally hundreds of years, people believed that there's a futuristic view of Antichrist, that he's going to come in the future. And during a seven-year trip, he's going to go crazy. No, he's been doing it all along. I hope and pray that you were blessed. Please share this with as many as possible. Please subscribe. And thank you for watching. God bless.